This episode is sponsored by Storyblocks. With Storyblocks, you have unlimited access to studio quality 4K stock video. You can check out more at the link below. Hey guys, and welcome to This Is Now. It's been just over three years since Nintendo started releasing mobile games, starting with Mitomo. If anyone remembers that. I don't. I don't really either. Nowadays, they're pretty common, but back then, the idea of Nintendo releasing first party games outside of their own hardware was unthinkable. Imagine gracing those mere peasants with phones with Mario Kart, and Mario, and Luigi, and other wonderful Nintendo branded characters. Ooh. They're not ready. Who's, who's gonna buy the 2DS's, Matt? Someone has to buy the 2DS's. You put the games on the phones, no one buys the 2DS. See, instead of competing against Microsoft and Sony with their high-spec powerful consoles, Nintendo has always focused on having a large library of high-quality first-party games, and having them on phones always seemed to be counterproductive to that goal. Especially considering that the Switch has sold millions and millions of consoles, it's easy to forget that just five years ago, Nintendo was actually in pretty dire straits. The 3DS was starting to show its age, and the Wii U was, to put it delicately, a complete and utter failure. Now at the same time, the mobile market was growing exponentially, raking in cash through games like Candy Crush, Nintendo was starting to feel pressure to enter that lucrative market. The problem was that both Nintendo's president, Satoru Iwata, and Nintendo of America's president, Reggie My Body Is Ready Fizume, was famously against the idea. They felt like bringing franchises such as Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon would devalue the brand, which used its beloved first party games to sell hardware. Now the logic there is that if Nintendo started releasing games such as A Link to the Past on the App Store or Play Store, there would no longer be an incentive for people to actually buy one of their 2DS's. Because all they care about are the 2DS's. But with the failure of the Wii U, Iwata and a group of Nintendo executives, including Mario's creator, Shigeru Miyamoto, came up with a new strategy for the company to become profitable again. Mobile games! I don't think they quite said that excited. They're like, I guess we have to. The new strategy also included developing the console handheld hybrid that of course became known as the Nintendo Switch. Iwata made the decision to have Nintendo partner up with a Japanese mobile game company called DNA to make at least five mobile titles starting with Mitomo. Now their goal was to create games that wouldn't cheapen the experience of playing a first party Nintendo game. And this in turn would advertise the bigger experiences that could only be played on dedicated Nintendo hardware to people who were usually content just playing games on their phones. It's like the drug dealer mentality, you know, like give them a little taste and they're hooked. Uh, the 2DS's will be flying off the shelves. The first one's free. The best example of this philosophy is their second mobile game, Super Mario Run. Instead of being free to play, it was free to start, which meant that you could download and play a couple levels for free, but then you would have to pay $10 for the rest of the game. Now, in my opinion, this is the best monetization strategy as far as game quality, but unfortunately, out of these seven games Nintendo's released since 2016, it's the only one to use it. The big reason for that is due to the huge price tag of $10, which of course isn't bad for a 2DS game, but for a mobile game, Super Mario Run just didn't catch on and it certainly did not sell anywhere near as much as Nintendo would have liked. Even though Super Mario Run was downloaded 200 million times in its first year, less than 10% of those people actually purchased the full game, causing it to earn a still respectable $56 million. Now while $56 million might sound like a ton of cash, the next game to release was Fire Emblem Heroes in 2017. Just like Mario Run, it was a slightly stripped down version of its console counterparts, but it utilized stamina timers on characters that would refill for free if you waited, of course, but it would refill instantly if you paid. Free to play. Not something you'll find on the 2DS. You could also use real money to buy new heroes for your party, and even though it was only downloaded 10 million times in its first three months, it pulled in $100 million. In its first year, it ended up pulling in a full $300 million. A little bit more than 56. That's a lot a more, bit. by a lot. Especially considering they had like, what, one-tenth the players? Now if you think that this is a bit shrewd for a company like Nintendo, you would be correct. Iwata did his best to make sure that the games would treat players fairly and not have deceptive free-to-play tactics. Unfortunately, he passed away suddenly in 2015, so when Super Mario Run made about half of what Fire Emblem's hero did in the same amount of time, he wasn't there to stop investors from getting greedy. From there, the mobile strategy was set. Every mobile game that Nintendo has released since then has been free to play instead of free to start. Animal Crossing Pocket Camp utilizes timers and randomized drops for furniture that you use to build up your campsite, and Dragalia Lost, which is a completely new IP that Nintendo has created, employs similar monetization mechanics to Fire Emblem Heroes, which of course did make over $100 million in its first year. And that brings us to Mario Kart Tour, which easily has the worst monetization strategy yet. Now on the surface, it looks exactly like what everyone would want, Mario Kart on your phone. 
However, the problems start when it comes to unlocking, well, pretty much anything. The game starts you out with one driver for free, but if you want to unlock another, you'll essentially have to open a loot box. Of course, the loot box costs five gems, which is the premium currencies too. Oh, and by the way, it's not guaranteed that you'll actually get that new driver since they're in a pool with carts and gliders because loot boxes. Now on top of all of that, you get bonuses on certain tracks for using certain characters. So if you don't have them, of course, you can always buy some gems and try your luck. But if that's not all bad enough, also, by the way, if you want to play 200cc, you got to pay five bucks a month because yikes. I think I got all that, right? I'm pretty sure that's the uh, uh, uh. That, that sounds like the gist. It's like, it's like I'm in the galaxy brain right now where it's like we could charge people for it or we could do free to play behind gems, behind loot boxes, behind bonuses. Oh, we're gonna throw in a $5 subscription because 200 CC. Subscriptions are fine. Battle passes, I'm actually a pretty big fan of in games, right? I pay for a battle pass sometimes on like Clash Royale, for example. There's obviously tons of great like subscriptions that are available in like other sort of areas. When you combine all the free to play bull Ooh. with all the loot box bull Ooh. and then you throw on a $5 a month subscription. Sorry, I'm getting a little profane here. Also, can I just throw a little bit of a hot take in here for a second? Go ahead. Mario Kart Tour isn't that great of a game. I played it a little bit. It's kind of whatever. Unfortunately for us, the crappy monetization didn't seem to hurt the game at all since it very quickly became the most downloaded mobile game ever. Although, fun fact, it only lasted about a week thanks to Call of Duty Mobile. You can check out more at our last week's episode of This Is. At our, you can check out our last week's episode of This Is, where Ken very helpfully broke down the pros and cons of no scoping in Call of Duty Mobile. So the real question that needs to be answered is whether or not the strategy is working. And the answer is, well, it depends on which game you're looking at. Now, Animal Crossing can definitely be marked as a no due to the fact that it came out in 2017, and the next full game in the series isn't releasing until 2020. Any hype that Pocket Camp built up will definitely be depleted by then. Now, when it comes to Fire Emblem, things are a bit trickier. The latest release, Three Houses, without question had the best US launch for the series since it tripled in the sales compared to the last game that came out here. Now, it's tough to say whether or not Fire Emblem's heroes really helped to gain those sales, though. I mean, I only knew most Fire Emblem characters because they're always in Smash. I'm like, Who's Ike? What's a Marth? Mario Kart Tour is another confusing one. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the latest entry in the series, as of course it's a Wii U port that came out well before Tour on the Switch all the way back in 2017. Now sure, Nintendo could be working on Mario Kart 9, but they haven't announced it yet and there are really no strong rumors that they are. Now as of April, it is easily the best selling game of the Switch, with almost 17 million copies sold, so Nintendo's probably not in a big rush to make a sequel to it. Honestly, if anything, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe helped promote Tour to other people as opposed to the other way around, like, you know, mobile games are supposed to. Now, the best case scenario here really is Pokemon Go. In the years since it's come out, it's gotten so much better than it was at launch. I say this because Josh, Jimmy, and Matt nonstop play it at work, and I'm like, hey, why don't we do some work? And like, nah. We're gonna go catch like some Pokemans. I'm like, okay. And Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee have directly benefited from the insane amount of people who play Pokemon Go. Honestly, unlike a lot of these other games, which are obviously sort of ports and sort of remakes of main games that have been kind of free to play a pie, free to play eyes, free to play ified, free to play ish, free to played. Well, the thing is with like Let's Go, it's almost more of like that's a mobile port to the main console. I mean, the especially like all the mechanics and stuff are nearly identical. The only issue is, well, Nintendo didn't actually make Pokemon Go. All right, so sit down, just kind of stick with me for a second. There's the Pokemon Company, which is separate from Nintendo. They teamed up with Niantic, who also is sort of partially owned by Google, and they made Pokemon Go. So well, yes, Nintendo does own part of the Pokemon Company, Pokemon Go doesn't technically count as one of their first party mobile games because it's Nintendo owns part of Pokemon, Pokemon contracted Niantic, who's of course partially owned by Google, and they made it, but it's like, not really a Nintendo game. Or it's, actually it is a Nintendo game, but it's not a first party Nintendo game. But having said this, from a pure business standpoint, it's hard to say that Nintendo's mobile strategy is failing. Their games are high quality and well made, even though they might have some shady monetization. And they're almost always littering the top free downloads on both the App Store and the Play Store. The games are also well supported with constant updates and new additions that do keep them fun and exciting to play. But beyond that, it's definitely a bummer that after Super Mario Run, they never tried the model that they introduced again. I mean, they had a good idea, but then they threw it away because free to play. I mean, personally, I'd gladly pay 20 or $30 up front for like a Pocket Camp or Mario Kart Tour if it would allow me to unlock everything in the game and, you know, 
playing it for free from that point forward. But I'm curious, what do you guys think? How do you feel about Nintendo's mobile strategy? Let us know in the comments below. I'm sure there's gonna be some, some spicy comments on this one. And that brings us to our sponsor of today's video, Storyblocks. With Storyblocks, you can download everything from audio, video, and even After Effects templates. There are no monthly limits, and everything is royalty free for personal and commercial use, including YouTube, such as this clip. This clip as well. This one's a favorite of mine. The best part is they are constantly adding new content, so there's always something to fit your project. You can check out more information at the link below at storyblocks.com slash Austin Evans. And of course, huge shout out to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Thank you very much for watching this episode of This Is. You can check out some of our other episodes like how Nintendo invented the PlayStation, or you also can check out, I don't know, that episode of Call of Duty Mobile that Ken did. I'm just gonna point them and stand here awkwardly until hopefully you click on one of them because we need to make sure that YouTube realizes that you love our channel. So please click on one of them. I'm not above begging. Pride is overrated. <laughs>